Hello. Hi. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Um, so I am going to traumatize you a little bit with some spiders, but we're going to like ease you into it, OK? Um, so if you can't tell by this beautiful squiggly line, it is the coast of like part of New South Wales. I definitely didn't draw it in paint. Um, and that is why it looks a little bit, it's a bit weird. Anyway, we're here, we're in Sydney. And in Sydney, we are sharing this space just in Sydney with around 3,500 other species alone of spiders. Um, that's not to count like the biomass or the quantity of them, it's just the species. So it gives you a bit of an idea of like just how much variation we have got with just this one group. And if you're familiar with Sydney, if you've grown up here, maybe you've just moved here and you've already managed to walk into a web, you'll know we are pretty well known for our spiders. So we'll introduce you to some of them now. Um, these are some of the guys that people commonly encounter in their gardens. So this girl up the top is, with the beautiful golden silk up there is a golden orb weaver. Uh, they're usually around February kind of time. They're a pretty chunky spider. And they're kind of the, one of the main culprits of people walking down their driveway in the middle of the night or like down a footpath or something. And you like feel this great sticky web reach across your face and it's in your hair and you're trying to work out where the spider is you're trying to work out where everything else is you've dropped your keys it's just an absolute disaster um, that's usually these guys uh, in addition to that the one down the bottom if you can spot the spider in that picture you can come and do field work with me um, but down the bottom is a little orb weaver so garden orb weavers super common in Sydney they actually often have these beautiful little red bits on their legs um, and this girl here has got a little, a little, I'm pointing at that screen, you can't see it, a little butt butted up to a casuarina seed. And there's some little toes there. It's very cute. Um, and this other one, super common with the pink background, is an enamel spider. Uh, there are so many versions of these. Uh, you'll find tiny, tiny little ones building beautiful little orbs throughout your gardens. Uh, this one is one of the biggest species, so she's probably like that big. Um, but they build these gorgeous webs throughout our gardens and they have this incredible pattern on them. Another culprit of our spider world is this guy. Uh, this is the gateway drug to spiders. Uh, anyone that tells me that they like spiders is because of jumping spiders. <laughs> it's usually because they're so cute, they're very charismatic. You look at a peacock spider and they have this gorgeous coloration on them and the males, they see a girl they like and they're like, I'm all do a little shimmy for you. They do a little dance. They wiggle themselves around. They're beautiful colors. And that particular individual found in my front garden um, is probably the quarter of the size of my pinky nail. So they are tiny and they are very, very intelligent for a spider as well. And last but not least are these guys. Um, my favorite description of this is uh, you're going to get a puppy. It's really cute bit stupid. Uh, let's go with like a Labrador. Um, and it's a cute little puppy and you're going to glue some extra legs on there. Um, and then you're going to give it a line of coke. Um, and that's what a huntsman is. So anyone that has ever tried to catch a huntsman spider in Sydney, you know, those guys, they are playing games with you. They are, they're up, they're fast, they're going. And you're sitting there going, I don't want to take a leg off. So Anyone that's been in Sydney is probably familiar with these guys. And if you haven't yet encountered a huntsman, I mean, that's unfortunate for you because I love them, but probably fortunate in your perspective. But there's one thing that all of these guys have in common, and that is that they are all relatively harmless. So unless you kind of have an allergic reaction to it, um, a bite from one of these guys isn't actually going to do too much damage to you. Uh, you might get like an itchy bite. It's probably gonna hurt if it's like a bigger spider. Yeah? So actually the vast majority of spiders in the entire world are pretty harmless to people. It's a bit of a waste really for them to bite us because what, what, what are they gonna do with us after that? So this leads us to our one exception, which we are so privileged to have right here in Sydney. And that is 
this guy. So this is the Sydney funnel web spider or Atrax robustus. This is my study species. And um, he's the one exception that uh, unfortunately for us can kill us. Um, and it just so happens that they are located in a very dense area of human population. So as we see before, a little squiggly, little squiggly map here, um, they can range like all the way up to Newcastle. They can go as far down as Wollongong and they can even go as far like west as Lithgow. But the densest areas of their population are right smack bang in the middle of like Sydney dense suburban populations. So as you can imagine, there's a decent amount of human wildlife interaction going on here. Uh, and with a particularly deadly spider, there's a lot of questions that are asked about how we can sort of overcome living with them. So just as a little background, this species evolved approximately 180 million years ago, a long time before we even were a concept. Um, so they've been here for a heck of a long time. That hasn't really um, made any sense to us uh, as scientists as to what's going on with this particular venom. Uh, there have been 13 confirmed deaths from these guys. However, since the invention of our antivenom in the 1980s, no one has died. Uh, that hasn't stopped the spiders from trying um, as there are around 30 people a year that kind of end up needing a lot of antivenom. Uh, so you might be wondering, well, how is this happening? And luckily for us, there are a lot of labs and a whole heap of research that goes into working out, well, what, what is this? Why are we seeing this kind of odd thing happen? Excuse me. Uh, anyway, um, so in reality, what is happening is we've got <laughs> a spider that has a very highly, very highly complex venom. And there is a specific protein in it that just so happens to disagree with primates. So, guess you heard me correctly, primates, primate lethal. Um, and in particular, it's actually the mature males of this species, much to contrary belief, most people seem to assume that it's the females. It is not, it is the boys. It is this very specific protein in their venom that targets the human nervous system and it sort of sends us into a bit of a paralysis and then we die. Uh, without antivenom, so please don't get bitten by one, would not recommend. Um, so we have a whole bunch of research on all of this. We know what their venom looks like. We know that it kills us. We know it kills primates. We know that if we stab a fly with it, it'll go, ow, and then get up 24 hours later and fly off. Um, so this is leaving us with this whole question of uh, <laughs> why us? Um, and long story short is we don't know. Um, and that's where I come in. So, as I said, we've got a whole heap of people that work on their venom, their toxicity, all of that sort of thing. Uh, to answer any kind of why question, that is when you need an evolutionary ecologist and a deluded PhD student. So, that's me. And I am the critical angle for this. <laughs> so, I wanted to know what is happening out in the wild. We have a lot of information about the lab, with these guys. So I wanted to see what's happening with our mature males, especially that when they're out looking for a female is when we often encounter them as people. So we wanted to see what's going on there. And as I said, they're out there, they're out there looking for mates. So we've got our male here and our female, and it's really just a story of love. Um, <laughs> and I'm hoping you guys will learn to love them after this. So I wanted to work out specifically, what does their movement look like? How far are they willing to go? And like, do we see any trends or any patterns that maybe we can use that in the future? So how does one tune into the love life of funnel web spider? Uh, first of all, you go out at night time because they're nocturnal. You go out and you catch yourself a spider. Hello? Okay, this is Harold. Harold, absolute superstar, loved him. He did so great. You take them back to the lab and you put a little tracker on them. So I have accidentally traumatized the people at Riot Art and Craft uh, by asking them several times what type of glue sticks to a spider. Um, it's okay, we got there, we worked it out, and Harold was a little champion for all of this. 
And once you've finished that, you can then map what their movement looks like. So this is Harold's movement. This is actually over a period of like th nearly three weeks. And you can see here, he has not moved that often. Uh, and I was like, well, what's going on here? Why are we actually like not moving that often? And it's actually only like 50% of the time they decide, oh yeah, okay, I'm gonna go for a little wander now. I'll go see if I can find myself a girl. And I was like, okay, well, we've got these weird little, we've got these periods of time when we're not moving. We've also got some like odd patterns going on. So let's, let's ask a few more questions. So I was like, okay, uh, what about environmental parameters? Pretty simple. So we wanted to look at, is there any temperature preference? Or is there any rain sort of preference going on there? Um, and long story short, if you don't know this song, you're too young, get out, uh, <laughs> but don't. Um, we did work out that they do quite happily travel quite a distance for a female, uh, but only if the temperature suits, which makes sense. Can't blame them for that. If I'm going on a date and the date is like, let's meet outside in the snow, um, I'll be like, how about no? Uh, I'm not prepared for that. So we worked out that these guys like a cooler day and a warmer night, and that results in them being quite happy to travel a bit further for a gal. But what about rain? And I can attest to this result because as I was like live tracking these spiders, I'm sitting there going, oh my God, it is pouring. It was like mid La Nina, it was absolutely flooding. And every time I go back to the same spot with my spiders, my volunteers can definitely attribute to this. And I look down and I'm like, he's in the same spot. <laughs> the spider is smarter than I am. How great. We worked out that they do not like to move if it's raining. The actual likelihood of them even moving in the rain is significantly reduced if it's even raining at all, let alone if there's more rain than God forbid. They don't like to get their feet wet. So they're wandering around. They're looking for all these places. They're looking for females. Um, and also, a little side note here, uh, and no judgment to the spiders, but uh, I definitely tracked some of my boys to multiple girls. Uh, and I also had several girls with multiple boys in them. So everyone was really just out there having a great time. And that's totally fine. No judgment on them. They do whatever they like. We love that for them. Um, but in this very confusing world of we've got girls here, we've got a girl here, and then like we plonk like a house in the middle of it, and then like there's a road, um, things can get a bit complicated. So initially you'd think, okay, well, you go on a date, you go, okay, they, they're at the other side of the bar, we'll walk over to the bar and be like, hey. But then if you add a whole bunch of other crap in there, like, okay, I don't know where you are, I'll open this door and it's someone's baptism and you're like, okay, that was wrong. And you open another door and it's like a swingers party and you're like, ah, stressful. Um, add on to that, it's just picture for a little itty bitty second here, that the other people around you in the bar are about 40 times the size of you. Uh, they're screaming at you and throwing stuff. So uh, you can kind of get in a picture here of what it's like to be a funnel web uh, when you accidentally walk into the house of a human being. Um, so really, I get this a lot of, oh, he's trying to bite me, it's really stressful. It's usually accompanied with this posturing from the spiders. So this is also Harold. What a little superstar, he's like a little actor, he's perfect. Um, this is an FYI if it makes you feel any better. Uh, when they do this kind of rearing up behavior, they're blind. Uh, their eyes are on the back of their head. So when they like lift their head up, they can't see anything. And as I said before, they are terrified. So my goal here is uh, we're going to change that narrative. It's not, he's going to kill me, he's going to bite me. Um, no, no, he's just really scared. Uh, and we're going to treat him with respect and help him out. And if, in the case you do find a funnel web in your house, just go onto the Australian Reptile, Reptile Parks website. There's a whole bunch of resources there. So what are we going to do if we do find a funnel web in our house? We are not going to burn it down. Um, I can tell you that it doesn't work because I did it. Uh, I did not burn my house down, but I did go out and set a whole, thing, whole heap of things on fire. Um, just for you guys. But 
Um, unfortunately, for those of you who think you can get away with using like a blowtorch on a spider, uh, it's not going to work uh, because these guys, as I said before, adapted 180 million years ago, have evolved with the Australian landscape on this country where we are burning regularly. So of course they were totally fine. However, just for a little bit of consolation for you guys, if we fast forward by about a year and we compare our burn and our unburn areas, we did find a pretty big difference in how many spiders burrows were present. And I mean, I can sort of attribute that to the fact that in our unburnt areas, they've got a lot more shade. Yeah, they've got probably a lot more prey items coming through. They haven't had to alter their habitat or anything like that. Whereas in our area that has been burnt, I don't know if anyone has ever stood on like freshly burnt soil. It is so hot, especially in the middle of summer. So can't really blame them. These guys in these areas have like come out after their neighborhood's been torched. They've rebuilt and then they've gone, actually, you know what, I don't really like it here. I think I'm gonna move. So we did find that they were essentially abandoning those areas and potentially even building in new ones. That is not to say that you should go and set your front garden on fire. Uh, would not recommend. I don't think the council will agree with it. And as we already discussed, it's probably not gonna work. So long story short from this is that, can we coexist? Uh, yes, we can, uh, because we already are. There are millions of spiders in the world. The biomass of them is incredible. So I'm very sorry to tell you if you're terrified of them, um, but you are actually already coexisting with them. We have coexisted with spiders for thousands of years and we will continue to do so in the future. Thank you.